Hi guys, how are things? I hope everyone is doing good. Um, so today what we're going to do is that we're going to discuss 5G throughput KPI. Uh, if you remember in the previous uh, session we discussed about 5G throughput from drive test perspective and we discussed how from drive test we can have a look at uh, different 5G throughput issues like radio, um, core and, and things like that. So today what we're going to do is we're going to discuss about 5G throughput KPI. Firstly, we will understand how the 5G throughput KPI works. Then we will look at two major 5G throughput KPIs. One is the 5G cell throughput and the other one is the 5G user throughput or the 5G UE throughput. So uh, we need to understand how both of them work and what is the significance if let's say UE throughput is higher than cell throughput or if cell throughput is higher than UE throughput what does it signify so let's start and uh, I hope you like this session as well so first let's understand the 5G throughput concept from the KPI perspective as defined by 3GPP this is the 3GPP uh, TS number if you want to learn more about it so uh, in simple words if you look at uh, this structure here, each block, each square block indicates a slot. Now what is a slot? Um, it can be 1 millisecond or 0 0.5 milliseconds or even 0 0.125 milliseconds depending on which uh, band you're using. So let's say if you're using low band FDD for instance 1.8 mega, 1.8 gigahertz or 2.1 gigahertz then this slot should mean 1 millisecond. So if you're talking about uh, let's say mid band which is let's say 3.5 gigahertz, 3.7 gigahertz something like that range then each slot will indicate 0 0.5 millisecond. And I've, I have all of this covered in the in the initial session where we talked about the structure of 5G. So anyways let's take an example for this one and say that it is 1 millisecond for now. So each slot here indicates 1 millisecond. The green box indicates the slot which has uh, data in it, which has actual volume in it. While this uh, gray box, it indicates that uh, this slot uh, is a retransmission. That means uh, this data in the, this slot is a retransmission, which means that uh, previously a transmission was sent by the G node B that the UE could not decode, so a retransmission is being sent. And, and a white slot here means that it is an empty slot. Now, as per 3GPV, uh, all the green slots are used for the throughput uh, volume calculation. Now, the last slot, which is the blue slot, that is not used. Now, which, what does it mean by a blue slot? The blue slot means that the last slot where the G0B's buffer was empty. Now, uh, I understand that this might not be very easy to um, simply grasp, but we will have an example in the next slide to understand what it means. But in simple words, it means that this is the last slot for this data transmission. So if, uh, let's say, a user was watching YouTube and all the video is downloaded, then the last bits of the video are being transmitted in the last slot, and that is uh, not included as per 3GPP in the 5G user throughput formula. So uh, what it calculates, UE throughput in downlink as per 3GPP is throughput volume DL divided by throughput time DL. Now what is throughput volume DL? All these green boxes, that is throughput volume DL. That means the retransmissions and the blue slot, which is the last slot, will not be pegged in this uh, 3GPP uh, throughput formula. This is the UE throughput formula. While the time, it starts from the first slot here where the data uh, is in the buffer and the data transmission has started and it goes all the way up till here while the last slot is not included in the time as well. So the last slot is not included in both numerator and denominator. So that will be the throughput time. So in this way, what we can say is that if there is a case that there are a lot of retransmissions, then the this retransmission will not be added in the throughput volume DL, which is this one, the numerator, but they will still be pegged in the throughput time DL, right? So which is the denominator. So if we have lots of retransmissions, throughput time DL will be higher, throughput volume DL will not increase that much, and our throughput will be lesser. Similarly, if 
in between we have lots of empty slots that will also increase the throughput time DL but not will not increase throughput volume DL so our throughput will go down so that is just to understand how the KPI itself works as per 3GPP and most of the vendors have actually have used the same concept of uh, UE throughput in downlink so they, the KPI is more or less the same concept so now let's understand with an example because I, under, I, 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 I can think that this one is not really a simple mechanism so if we understand with an example that will be easier for us so let's say we have these slots over here so each slot slot number one slot number two slot number three and so on each slot indicates let's say one millisecond and uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity I have said that each slot carries 10 kilobytes of data so data in the g -Bees buffer is equal to 90.5 kilobyte so for instance the UE is downloading uh, uh, let's say uh, a picture so it's downloading a picture so the picture is 90.5 kilobytes in size so it will download that then the G0B will send uh, G0B's per slot capacity just an example is let's say 10 kilobyte so what it will do is to send 90.5 kilobytes it will send 10 10 10 10 up till the ninth slot so that big makes it so that makes it 90 kilobytes and uh, the last 0 0.5 kilobyte will be transmitted in the 10th slot so that is how we will transmit the whole 90.5 kilobytes now when we talk about user thr throughput what will happen is as per 3GPP the last slot this one will be excluded right so the throughput for user will be from here till here divided by 9 milliseconds right nine slots right so it will become 10 plus 10 plus 10 up till here divided by 9 multiplied by 8 because uh, we wanted um, kilobits right we wanted bits per second right this is bytes so it's you multiply by 8 to convert kilobits to bits uh, to bits and when you calculate this your throughput will come out to be 80 mbps here however when we talk about 5g cell throughput so in cell throughput there is we talk about all the volume and all the time because we're not talking about user per user, user specific KPI so in cell throughput all 10 slots volume is added divided by all 10 slots time so in this case all of this 10 plus 0 0.5 which is this one multiplied by 8 divided by 10 so you can see here it was 9 here it is 10 so what will happen is the cell throughput will come out to be 72 mbps now what is the rationale behind that what is the reason that we do that now in case of user throughput uh, we don't want to calculate these kind of that the slots which have uh, are nearly empty because that will show us a very unrealistic a very low user throughput value which is not practical so take an example for instance this one here a user is uh, uh, getting whatsapp messages for instance so what will happen uh, the first slot a small mass uh, buffer comes into the gnode b 0 0.2 kilobytes gnode b sends all of that over the air in the first slot 0 0.2 kilobyte now because whatever was in the buffer all of it was sent over the air so from the ue throughput perspective this will not peg volume and it will not peg time as well so at this time ue throughput will not peg at all similarly he gets a next message after two slots which is 0 0.1 kilobyte the g -Node b will send all of that 0 0.1 kilobyte into this slot and the buffer will go empty so again uh, the UE throughput will not be pegged similarly over here and over here as well so in these four slots whatever the data came in the buffer g -Node b sent all of it over the air within the same slot so the same slot emptied the buffer in one in one go so it will not peg uh, any value here uh, for the UE throughput so in this case the UE throughput will not be pegged but in case of cell throughput because cell throughput pegs all slots which carry data so it will be pegged and it will peg like this so 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 divided by because there are four slots here which carry data so divided by 4 
and you multiply it by 8 which is uh, from kilobytes to bits so what you get you get 1.2 mbps now this is a very low value again so if you have a 5g channel which is a big channel and you expect lots of throughput if you use uh, these kind of slots to ca calculate user throughput then the user throughput will be very very low that is why the 3gpp only ensures uh, on that we calculate throughput or user throughput for 5g from the kpis on those slots which are actually full so that means that we are actually utilizing the full bandwidth of the 5G channel and then we can actually say that this is what our radio capacity or radio throughput should be instead of using this one which are nearly empty right so uh, that is why a user throughput uh, will always be higher than cell throughput in these scenarios right now what will ha what are the scenarios when cell throughput will be higher than user throughput let's take another example and understand that over here we have two users now orange one is uh, one user and blue one is the other user now the blue one has data in zero rupees buffer let's say ue1 65 kilobytes while the orange one uh, has data in zero rupees buffer uh, let's say 26 kilobytes now the zero b will need to send both the users over the air right so let's say in this case in the first slot g node b sends 5 kilobytes for user 1 and 5 kilobytes for user 2 now here is where the difference comes in now the data volume transmitted in this slot is 10 kilobyte that is same for both uh, user throughput and cell throughput but the time that we we peg over here for each of them is different for cell throughput this is still one slot it will be pegged as one for user throughput each slot is pegged depending on how many users are there so now if this slot has two users then it will become two into one so it will peg two because it we're talking about user throughput we have to divide by the number of users right to get the actual ue throughput so this will become two in the next slot it only sends this ue1's data all 10 kilobytes so volume is 10 kilobytes user throughput will peg one slot because it's one slot into one ue and cell throughput will peg one as well because it is one slot similarly in this slot the the g node b let's say sends five kilobytes for ue1 and five kilobytes for ue2 again data volume 10 kilobytes ue throughput will be packed one slot into two users is equal to two and time for cell throughput will be one because again is one slot now if we and we so on we go forward until we reach here now at this point the use the g node b is sending five kilobytes for this ue2 and five kilobytes for this ue1 now if you look here for ue2 which is orange ue we have already transmitted five plus five ten plus five fifteen plus five twenty plus five twenty uh, twenty five so with this slot twenty five kilobytes for the ue2 has already been transmitted while for the ue1 over here at this point we have transmitted around uh, uh, 5 plus 10 15 plus 5 20 plus 5 25 plus 10 35 40 and 50 we have transmitted 50 kilobytes so far we still have data in the buffer so we send five more kilobytes then it becomes 55 kilobytes right now uh, what it means is that at this point volume is 10 kilobyte ue throughput time again two users into one slot is equal to two while cell throughput time again is one slot for the cell throughput so it's one but now in the next slot we only are left with one kilobyte of data for ue2 so the g node b will transmit one kilobyte here for ue2 and the remaining uh, data goes remaining slot data goes which is nine kilobytes will go to ue1 now in case of ue2 now the buffer is empty because all this 5, 5, 5, 5, 5 and 1 makes 26 kilobytes. So for UE2, this is the last slot if the buffer is empty. So in that case, the uh, throughput time will not peg this one for uh, UE throughput, right? So it will become 1 here. Uh, the, uh, the volume for uh, uh, cell throughput will be 10 kilobytes. While the volume for uh, UE throughput here will be 9 kilobytes because the last one kilobyte of the last slot will not be calculated in the UE throughput. So over here, we'll have one for time for UE throughput and one 
for time for cell throughput. Now on the last slot here, we have only one kilobyte left for this UE as well. So it will be transmitted over here. And because one kilobyte, that's the volume, that this volume will not be pegged for uh, the UE throughput, but it will be pegged for the cell throughput. Now the UE throughput time will be zero because it is the last slot for the UE1, while the cell throughput time will be one. So it will uh, be pegged over here as well. So now when we talk about UE throughput, all of them 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus and so on will be here multiplied by eight, but divided by instead of divided by nine, it will divide by 14 because we have two here, one, three, two here, five, then two here, seven, then one here, eight, then two this uh, 10, 11, uh, 13 and 14. So because there are more than one users per slot, so the time for UE throughput will be 14 here. So if we divide all of this, we get around 51 Mbps. Now, if we look at the cell throughput KPI, we calculate some all of this data together. So 10, 10, 10, 10 up to one, multiply by eight and divide it by the all the time we have like all the slots we have, which is 10 slots. So it will be 73 Mbps. Now in this case, what it means is that 5G cell throughput is higher than 5G UE throughput. So uh, the main difference to understand here is that cell throughput will normally be higher when the user per slot or user per TTI has gone above one. Because when the user per TTI are above one, then the UE throughput will start pegging two or three or more depending on the number of users per TTI in the time. So that will decrease the user throughput. While the cell throughput will still continue pegging one for each slot, if it does not matter if this slot, let's say has 10 users in this, this slot, each carrying one kilobyte, what will happen is the cell throughput time will still be one, but the UE throughput time will become 10. So what will happen? 10 divided by 10, UE throughput will become one, while cell throughput will be again 10 divided by 1, 10. So uh, in that case, the cell throughput will still be higher. That is why when we have more uh, more traffic, usually cell throughput is, is better while UE throughput is bad. But if we are conditions which are lightly loaded in the cases where we have the number of users per TTI less than one, in that cases, cell throughput will be lower and UE throughput will be higher. So uh, that's another way of looking at your network as well. If your cell throughput is getting higher and UE throughput is, re is reducing, that might indicate that you are hitting congestion. Uh, if uh, your UE throughput is higher and cell throughput is lower, that means that you have more capacity available on that band and you might be able to lower that band more. So th this kind of uh, tactics, you can actually uh, understand the difference between the two and utilize the difference to make sure that you make the optimum decision for your network. Now, um, just uh, to set, uh, having said that, we um, in this last slot over here, the UE throughput should time should pick up peg nine kilobytes because the one kilobyte from this one will not be pegged in the UE throughput. So this should be nine over here instead of ten. So uh, sorry for that. Do rectify it in your understanding. So that's the the throughput KPI. <coughs> sorry. So uh, in the next session, what we'll do is that. Of, now you have understood the throughput KPI and how it works. So in the next session, we will talk about different aspects like uh, radio issues, congestion issues, uh, core issues, transport, backhaul issues, and to find out those issues looking at the throughput KPI. So uh, that will be the next session. Uh, stay tuned and uh, talk to you later. Have a nice day.